Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Jones from the West Virginia University Extension Service Small Farm Center, and I make videos on increasing your farm success, whether you're getting started locally selling at a farmer's market, or you are increasing your farm efficiencies by scaling up. I am here to guide you on your sustainable agriculture journey by putting knowledge to work. And today, I will be discussing the Farmer's Tax Guide, or what is also referred to as IRS Publication 225. So what is IRS Publication 225? It's a document published by our Internal Revenue Service that gives a breakdown of all of the wonderful tax breaks you should be taking advantage of. This annual publication details and outlines how the federal government taxes farms, and this document is currently 92 pages, so I'll be making videos to highlight the details and break down the information into more bite-sized chunks. And in general, the Farmer's Tax Guide helps individuals involved in agribusiness navigate the farm-specific tax code. Individuals are liable for taxes, if the farm is operated for profit, whether the taxpayer owns the farm or is a tenant, and we can discuss some of those differences in another video. It also outlines the different types of accounting methods that may be used for farmers to run their operations, typically cash accounting, though sometimes accrual, and how farms must report their income. And yes, I said must. Tax evasion is always a bad idea, not to mention illegal, but there are ways to reduce your taxable income and in turn legally pay less in taxes. So what is an agribusiness? An agribusiness is the term used for the agricultural business sector, which includes farming and farming related activities. It covers every step that's taken to get your product to market from the production all the way through the distribution. And remember, farming as a business differs significantly from most other businesses. So even though you run your farm as a business, special rules apply and these are designed to help you. There are special rules for deducting improvement costs, the depreciation of your machinery, and even reporting crop rents. So another publication you should be aware of from the IRS is Publication 51, which is a document that specifically guides you as an agricultural employer and how to comply with tax withholdings, which as a new business owner can be a scary thought. So the U.S. Department of Labor does require employers to register with them and does not allow employers to label farm employees as independent contractors just because it's easier for your paperwork load. That's a big no-no. So this is a topic I'm happy to cover in a future video. Let me know in the comments below if this would interest you. And not only does the IRS publish these guides, but income from your farm even has a special designation. It's divided into gross cash income and gross farm income. So these designations are important because this is how the United States Department of Agriculture Economic Research Service designates whether or not you're a small farm business. So this typology class is measured by your annual gross cash farm income, which includes sales of crops, your livestock, payments made under ag federal programs, and other farm related cash income, including fees from production contracts. So if you're a small farm, then your gross farm, your gross cash farm income is less than $350,000 per year. So I'll post the links in the description box below for the IRS website, so you can check out IRS Publication 225 and IRS Publication 51. And in the Extension Service, we thrive on good feedback, so please drop your questions in the comment section below and let me know what videos I should make next. I will definitely dive deeper into various tax topics to benefit your farm. So if you found the content useful, please give it a big thumbs up below and be, to sh be sure to subscribe to our content by selecting the notification bell to get an update on future videos. Until next time, happy farming. Toodles!